Let's get started. Good evening and welcome to today's meeting. Whether you are joining in person or online, we hope you'll continue to participate in our meetings in whichever manner you feel most comfortable. Um, before I go through the agenda, we are convening as three different bodies tonight, so you'll, you'll hear us go in and out of different meetings, but effectively it's all the same meeting, so just bear with us. Um, the first uh, body that we're going to be convening at is the local building authority. Um, so that is what we are currently convened as. And the first item on our agenda is item A2, the Pledge of Allegiance. So if you'll please join us for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Okay, we are now on to item A3, which is approval of the meeting minutes of previous local building authorities. I will look for a motion. Move for approval. Second. Motion, motion from Council Member Puy, a second from Council Member Wharton. Um, is there any comment, any discussion to this motion? Okay, so the motion is to move for approval as noted in the agenda of the meeting minutes. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. The motion passes unanimously. Okay, so now we are on I section B of the LBA agenda and B1 is a resolution for a tentative budget for the capital projects fund of the local building authority for, f for fiscal year 2024, 25. I will look for a motion. Mr. Chair, I move that the council approve a resolution adopting the tentative budget for the capital projects fund of the local building authority of Salt Lake City, Utah for fiscal year 2024-2025. Second. I have a motion from council member Wharton and a second from council member Lopez Chavez. Is there any discussion to this motion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. Motion passes unanimously. This brings us to the consent portion of the our, of the LBA agenda, which is section C. I will look for a motion. So moved. Second. So council member, uh, motion from council member Pui and a second from council member Wharton for approval of the consent agenda. Any discussion to this motion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. The motion passes unanimously. Um, this concludes our local building authority meeting. I will ask for now a motion to adjourn as a local building authority and convene as the redevelopment agency. Mr. Chair, I move that we adjourn as the local building authority and reconvene as the redevelopment agency board for Salt Lake City. Second. A motion from Council Member Warren, second from Council Member Lopez Chavez. Any discussion to this motion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. Motion passes unanimously. Okay, we are now convened as the redevelopment agency board for Salt Lake City. Um, in the redevelopment agency's agenda, the first item is E1, and item E1 is a resolution for a tentative budget for the redevelopment agency of Salt Lake City for FY 24-25. I will look for motion. Mr. Chair, I move that the board approve a resolution adopting the, the tentative budget for the redevelopment agency of Salt Lake City, Utah, for fiscal year 2024-2025. Second. I have a motion from Council Member Puy and a second from Council Member Dugan. Any discussion to this motion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. Motion passes unanimously. Uh, this concludes our redevelopment agency board meeting, so I'll ask for a motion for us to adjourn as the RDA board and reconvene as the Salt Lake City Council. Mr. Council. Chair, I move to uh, close the RDA meeting, adjourn the RDA meeting, and uh, convene as the Salt Lake City Council meeting. Second. second. Uh, thank you. A motion from Councilman Pui, second from Councilman Dugan. Any d discussion to this motion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. Motion passes unanimously. We are now convened as the Salt Lake City Council. Uh, thank you to everyone who is joining us tonight. Before we move through the agenda, I will uh, explain our updated general comment registration process and remind everyone about the rules of decorum for council meetings. Individuals may register to comment on any scheduled public hearing items until that public hearing item is closed. For the general comment section, we accept signups up until 7.30 p.m. The general section has been changed to one hour. Um, so if you are here to speak to give general comments, which is anything not specifically on the agenda for a hearing tonight, um, then 
uh, so sign up and we will limit that section to one hour. Uh, unfortunately, it may be given that there's a lot of people in this room that not everyone will be able to speak. To help make the most of our one hour comment time, we have meeting rules designed so that we can conduct the city business eff efficiently and effectively and ensure that the meeting is safe, orderly, and free from intimidation. The following rules help us maintain that safe and welcoming environment. These are the rules of decorum um, in this meeting and going forward, and we will not be giving warnings, so please, uh, please follow these rules. Um, first, keep your react, keep to keep our reaction from affecting your ability to share your opinion freely, council members refrain from reacting to or responding to your comments to allow everyone to share your opinions freely. Uh, when making your comments, please address the body as a whole, not any individual elected official. Council staff are available during and after the meeting to help with any questions or information sharing. Avoid the use of threatening or discriminatory language. Do not insult others based on religion, ethnicity, race, color, gender, sexual orientation, or physical ability. Uh, whether you agree or disagree with someone's comment, clapping, cheering, shouting, booing, snapping, gesturing, obstructing, or discouraging others from commenting is not allowed. Um, I know when you hear something that you agree with, it's, it's common to want to cheer or clap, but we really want to make sure that everyone, even with opposing viewpoints, can feel, feel safe to comment. Um, the full meeting rules are listed at the door, and our staff will post a link in the Zoom. So this brings us to item G4. No, G2. Uh, G2 is um, approval of the formal meeting minutes of February 20th, 2024, and April 2nd, 2024. I'll look for a motion. Move for approval. Second. Second. All right, I have a motion from Council Member Pui and was it Wharton? Or, and sure. second from Council Member Wharton. Any discussion to this motion? Uh, seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. Nay. Okay. Uh, that map passes unanimously. Next, it brings us to item G3, which is exciting. Uh, Mayor Mendenhall will now present to us the fis propo her pro proposed fiscal budget, including the library fund for the fiscal year of 2024 to 2025. Madam Mayor, the floor is yours. Thank you, Council Member Mono. Thank you, City Council. It's the first Tuesday in May. So that means you get the big, beautiful budget book into your hands and the entire CIP book. And I'm excited to tell you tonight about what we are recommending for your consideration. Good evening, council members, council staff, and our city team, and my fellow Salt Lakers. I am excited to be here tonight to present my recommended budget for the upcoming 2025 fiscal year. This year's proposal is anchored by a commitment to executing our vision to support families, residents, and the incredibly bright future of Salt Lake City. We're charting new pathways to cultivate a high quality of life for our residents and the generations who will call this city home so long after us. As you know, we've had an incredible past couple of months. When I stood before you in January at the State of the City Address, I outlined my intention for our capital city to level up and embrace the opportunities ahead. And boy, have we worked hard to ensure that those opportunities come to Salt Lake City. Last month, we hosted the International Olympic Committee's Future Host Commission. They came away wholly impressed with our facilities, our people, and our plans to welcome the world again. We stand closer than ever to securing the 2034 Winter Olympics and Paralympic Games prepared and ready to sign the contract this July in Paris. And the Games will be centered in Salt Lake City. To quote the IOC's Carl Stoss during their visit, he said, we must bring the Games to the people. That means to bring sport to the people, to bring sport to the city downtown. End quote. And that's exactly what we will do with you. Less than two weeks later, I was honored to join you in the exciting announcement that a new National Hockey League franchise is moving to Salt Lake City this year. And while I vocally supported the creation of a downtown sports entertainment culture and convention district for more than a year, 
Those discussions have accelerated since the passage of the Capital City Revitalization Zone Bill and the addition of another professional sports franchise to our city. I wanna thank our city council members for supporting this vision, for being at the table and working diligently to guide our city to the next level. I've said it before and I'll say it again, this is an incredible time to be a Salt Laker. The months and years ahead will require great care from city leadership to ensure that these opportunities also help foster our broader goals to support a more people-focused, family-focused experience in our downtown core. We are poised to deliver on those intentions and to shape some of the greatest transformations this city has ever seen. This year's budget supports the city's present needs and it positions us to move full steam ahead on these generational opportunities which are approaching at a rapid speed. This budget allows us to achieve these visions and level up services and amenities to support our most vulnerable communities. It enables us to address some of the greatest challenges we face like homelessness and affordable housing. And this is all possible because our city is determined to find solutions and to take hold of our exciting potential. This year I'm proposing a general fund budget of $475,245,078, which marks a 5.9% increase from last year's general fund budget. This proposal is responsible and accountable, is proactive and it's determined. It's a nuts and bolts budget for our city, and it sets, up, sets us up to execute catalytic ambitions. We can and will do both. We have done both. We can deliver a responsible, balanced budget and drive planning for powerful initiatives to enrich our quality of life, including projects like the Green Loop, the Main Street Pedestrian Promenade, and the development of a dynamic sports entertainment culture and convention district in our downtown. This year, we began with a budget deficit of more than $20 million before even considering service or program expansion. We exercised creativity and diligence to develop a holistic budget, fund key priorities, and tackle our imbalance. We invited city departments to closely review their existing budgets and define their greatest needs. This intentional approach allowed us to avoid a property tax increase and fund the needs of our city at the same time. I'll say it again because I think it's important to reiterate our commitment to building a responsible budget. There are no major tax increases in this budget. Typically, we build a budget beginning with the council adopted budget from the prior year and then our budget committee considers key changes to service levels or to new programs we're interested in. Starting in this coming fiscal year, we will take a different approach to building our budget, line by line, breaking each program down to a functional zero. We will examine every piece that makes up every city function, from staffing to equipment to services. This will help us scrutinize where we may best cut or consolidate resources and where we truly need to focus any additional people or funds. While we can't fund every department request, program, or new employee this year, we developed a responsive budget focused on livability and quality of life, delivering positive results for all Salt Lakers. One important action I wanna to highlight tonight surrounds families. They are foundational to what makes Salt Lake City a world-class city. Our families, youth, and future generations are those that we come to work for, that we have to plan for, that we budget for. In recent months, I've heard from parents about increased fees at our youth sports facilities as the result of an inter interpretation of state statute. Tonight, I want to say that I stand with our families who play, coach, and support youth athletics. I stand with August Walker, who's here tonight somewhere. Thanks, Thank you for being here, August. He's a little league coach, and he led the charge to bring this issue to the forefront here at City Hall. 
I stand with Rose Park Little League, who delivered these dozens of passionate letters to me just a couple of weeks ago. And in conjunction with this year's budget, my administration transmitted to the council a new fee schedule. And this proposes that the city discount athletic field recreation fees for youth. This will cost the city approximately $57,000 annually. It's really a relatively small price to pay to ensure that families won't be priced out of youth recreational opportunities because of the cost of renting our athletic fields. And I'm going a step further. In this budget, we will reimburse youth sports organizations the difference between the new fee and the old fees that we have already collected over the past two years because it's the right thing for us to do. This will ensure hundreds of kids can more readily sign up for youth leagues and access activities on our fields to practice, play, and develop lifelong skills that sports teach us. Discipline, responsibility, and teamwork. Opportunities like this for our youth are critical to generating the city's next leaders and engaging community members. This is about more than field access. This is about delivering for our families, for our children and our future. And I'm grateful to the city council who has already expressed their support for this move. Not only are we addressing the fee schedule for athletic fields, but we're also reinforcing our ability to maintain and care for our multi-use fields and parks. This year, we will fund a new coordinator position in our public lands department to oversee and ensure that our parks and public lands are as well maintained as they can be. Salt Lakers are passionate about our access to quality parks and open space, and I want to again thank residents for approving the Parks, Trails, and Open Space Bond in 2022. We are now investing in our public spaces because we know how important they are for our quality of life, and we're doing it at a rate we have never invested before. This year's budget proposal will help our public lands team expand its capacity to manage these treasured community spaces and thoughtfully oversee the new projects that the bond has made possible. This is all part of our continuing, rather, this is all part of continuing our work and investments which were bolstered by the GEO bond. I'd like to mention that in this budget, the city is funding not one, but two major art installations on the west side, taking advantage of the great community process that our Salt Lake City Arts Council recently led. The Arts Council concluded that either the new Glendale Regional Park or the west end of the Nine Line should be the place for a new large scale public art installation. They did such a good process that I decided I want both. And so the RDA is contributing from the RDA's arts fund to make the second art installation possible. Strengthening access to parks, public lands, and community space doesn't stop there. Our work to create a permanent pedestrian promenade on Main Street also continues. The programming we funded on Main Street since 2020 has brought so much more life and connection and activity to our downtown. We will establish a permanent pedestrian promenade feature in Salt Lake City, but it can't be done without thorough analysis, partnership, and a little imagination. This week, our economic development team will release findings from the Main Street Promenade Conceptual Design Study, which spotlights the public's strong support for this legacy vision that will transform Salt Lake City for the next 100 years. The study found no significant infrastructure roadblocks and it recommends additional stakeholder engagement and analysis on maintenance, parking, traffic, and utilities. And so this year, we propose $115,000 in funding for a comprehensive economic analysis to review the project's economic benefits and impacts as we guide the city's preferred concept design forward toward a permanent vision for Main Street. With another Olympic and Paralympic Games on the horizon and the reconstruction of our international airport, Salt Lake City is leveling up in the world. As we solidify our place on the global stage, it is important that we foster our international connections. 
And last year, I was honored to join you in welcoming a delegation from our first sister city, Matsumoto, Japan. These relationships we have, centered on building peace and diplomacy, enhance our connection to the world, from which we can carry out ideas to address some of our biggest problems and opportunities, like the climate change panel that we held with Mayor Yoshino Gaon. This budget nurtures the growth of our sister cities program. Salt Lake City is achieving more as we convene and collaborate with sister cities, with partners, than we ever could do in isolation. Earlier tonight, we heard from Smith Entertainment Group about another opportunity to reimagine the heart of downtown with the creation of a more connected, more activated sports, entertainment, culture, and convention district in and around the Delta Center. The Delta Center is an economic engine for our city, and data shows that our biggest economic days are ones where there's activity at the Delta Center. In 2022, 76% of our top visitation days were tied to the Delta Center. SEG's ownership and doubling of non-jazz events has helped us experience a nationally recognized recovery coming out of the pandemic. And adding 41 more professional sporting events with our new NHL team each year will further enhance downtown Salt Lake City and ensure that we have the means to continue addressing our challenges. We're leveling up as a city, and any one of these initiatives, the NHL, a sports, entertainment, culture, and convention district, the Green Loop, Main Street uh, Pedestrian Promenade, by themselves, would breathe new life into our urban core and bolster the city's ability to address needs in our communities. But together, they have the power to fundamentally redefine the identity and experience of Salt Lake City's downtown to make it more dynamic and entertaining, more livable, equitable, and sustainable, to make it more responsive to families, welcoming to visitors, and profitable for small businesses, to ensure all of these opportunities are coordinated and to champion the community's interests. I'm proposing a new position in my office to manage downtown projects. While the legislature's authorization of a potential sales tax increase to support a sports, entertainment, culture, and convention district is not directly reflected in this budget, you're running it in a parallel process, I am eager to advance that opportunity and continue engaging in the many conversations that we will have ahead. We know that the way we build public benefits needs to be as diverse as the residents and visitors that we serve from providing public space and fueling our economic engine to affordable housing and outreach to our most vulnerable. We have not slowed an inch in our prioritization of affordable housing. New graduates need it, young families need it, many of our aging residents and thousands of hardworking Salt Lakers need access to affordable and deeply affordable housing. The last four years of the city's record investment was just the beginning. Affordable housing has been such a priority for my administration, as it has for the council as well, that we keep putting more into it throughout the year, not just in the annual budget. Like in March, the city dedicated $17.7 .7 million to facilitate the construction of 1,500 new affordable housing units, many of which are family-sized through the RDA and City's develop, uh, Department of Community and Neighborhoods. Tonight, I'm recommending that we allocate another 2.59 million in the budget for affordable housing through the RDA. Affordable housing isn't just an annual budget priority, it's a year-round funding priority that continues to yield powerful results. A critical part of supporting our neighbors in Salt Lake City is our steadfast financial investments in services and investment of time and partnerships to help our most vulnerable residents. This budget doubles our rapid intervention team and the city's ability to directly engage with our unsheltered residents and connect them to essential services, resources, including substance use treatment programs, like the VOA's recovery on Redwood facility that expanded last year, shelter like the micro-shelter community, and supportive housing. 
The launch of the Rapid Intervention Team last year has been a valuable tool to support our communities, and the city continues to be proactive in collaborating with the state and the county on increasing services, expanding shelter capacity, and improving winter planning. We cannot address the statewide homelessness crisis without working together with our partners. We are each responsible for different parts of this complex issue. This budget ensures the city continues to do its part. Our city justice court is another touch point we have with our vulnerable populations. I know many of you are familiar with city programs like homelessness court, hearts resource fairs, and kayak court. For unsheltered residents, court cases and warrants are a barrier to achieving stability, housing, and breaking the cycle of homelessness. Salt Lake City is taking outreach a step further with a new approach to justice, promoting access to resources and helping remove obstacles to stable housing and support. We're meeting with people where they are and how they are with accountability and now also with hands-on case management. This budget facilitates a new full-time position at the Justice Court to support the recently established Familiar Faces program and conduct outreach that bridges the gap from justice to the community, whether that's helping complete a needs questionnaire or being a consistent face to connect defendants with wraparound services. As the city works closely with our residents who are living unsheltered, our service providers and state partners, we are making real strides in ensuring homelessness is truly rare, brief, and non-recurring. We have good people who are committed to the community safety every day in Salt Lake City. And as we continue to build out a more nuanced public safety response to better serve residents when they call us facing an emergency and ultimately save more lives. We're enthusiastic to deploy an additional medical response paramedic team through Salt Lake City Fire Department in this proposed budget, who will work alongside our firefighters, our EMTs, and our social workers to provide basic emergency medical care immediately when we arrive on scene. I'm grateful for the concerted crime reduction efforts led by Chief Brown and our city's police officers Using multiple strategies implemented during my administration, we are seeing double digit declines in crime in nearly every single council district and a 15 year low in our citywide crime rate. This budget accounts for renegotiated salary structures that bring Salt Lake City's police department back to the top of the market so we can continue to recruit the best people and fill all open positions. And we're always exploring grant opportunities beyond the general fund for pilot projects and new initiatives, like enhancing the mental health and wellness of our police department. Excuse me. Also, later this month, we're, we will apply for a federal, federal grant that our police department receives regularly that would pay for 10 to 12 new police officers dedicated to the Jordan River and North Temple. The grant would cover $1.5 million of the cost of the officers over a three-year span. This complete squad would have the ability to be present in the corridor seven days a week, dramatically increasing our community policing capacity and crime prevention in these neighborhoods whose families need and deserve it. Strengthening livability in our communities also involves investing in the city's ability to enforce policies and regulations that maintain safety and order on our streets and in our neighborhoods, especially as the city continues to grow. We are all too familiar with the signs of growth, orange cones, detours, and sometimes blockages that weren't permitted and weren't planned. This budget invests in code enforcement personnel to better ensure that everyone can safely and comfortably access residential and commercial areas during construction and development. The sting of lengthy road construction projects is difficult, and believe me, I experience it alongside you every day. So we're taking more proactive steps to keep our roads better maintained before they need a full replacement. We began a pilot mill and overlay program last year, and it's been so successful that we're investing an additional $300,000 a year to maintain our city streets in this budget. 
These commitments to mobility greatly impact the quality of life of all of our residents. This budget increases transit access by proposing more than $300,000 in expanded funding for the UTA on demand on Salt Lake City's west side. This will connect more residents with tracks, front runner, and buses, mm -hmm. and ultimately to their jobs, schooling, or with each other. That will take us to more than $3 million annually for this funding. We're also continuing our investment in transit passes for students, parents, and educators through our Hive Pass partnership with UTA and the Salt Lake City School District. The city is not only connecting our residents with transit, but also by arts, culture, and events supported through the ACE Fund. After receiving hundreds of applications this year, my office awarded grants supporting 126 community organized events that celebrate our cultural and artistic diversity, that protect our environment and build a more sustainable Salt Lake City. These kind of events are the threads woven together that form our identity, which is why this budget proposes additional funding for future ACE grants that empower our residents to celebrate and support the diversity and the needs of our unique communities. The city's bones, our streets, our parks, our curbs, and other public infrastructure are critical for the success of our communities. Every resident, business, and visitor depends on the city's maintenance of these capital projects. In this budget, I am proud to spotlight important CIP, or capital improvement program projects, that will fortify that infrastructure. 6.25 million to support complete streets reconstruction and overlay, promoting safer streets access for all pedestrians and travelers with all types of transportation. $4 million to support the reconstruction of the Jordan River Bridge on 400 South. Nearly $1 million dedicated to our neighborhood byways program. $750,000 toward repairing sidewalks and $300,000 for safer crossings citywide. All of the work I've discussed tonight cannot happen without our dedicated city employees. It's imperative that we invest in and retain our team of public servants in this competitive job market so we can continue to deliver the services our residents demand and deserve, which is why the budget also includes a 5% cost of living adjustment for non-represented employees and an increase in health savings account contributions for our employees. There's no question that Salt Lake City is propelling forward. The goals I laid out, out for our city this year, earlier in the year, and our ambitious work in the three months that have followed have positioned us squarely on a strong path. This reasonable budget supports our forward movement as we continue down this path that previous generations of Salt Lakers could only dream of. We're undaunted because we will not do it alone. I want to express my deepest gratitude for our finance team, led by Chief Financial Officer Mary Beth Thompson and Budget Director Gre Greg Cleary, and to the entire Budget Committee for their thoughtful and diligent work on this budget proposal. Thank you. And thank you, City Council and staff, for the work that you are about to do over the next several weeks to carefully consider and finalize this budget. Thank you for allowing me to present to you tonight. Thank you, Mayor Mendenhall. Um, many of you may know this, but uh, over the next several weeks, the council will be holding many, many budget hearings. Uh, many weeks we'll be meeting twice a week on Tuesdays and Thursdays uh, before we must adopt the final budget in June. And so over the next couple months, we invite members of the public to tune into our budget briefings and of course to share your feedback on all of these important issues. So thank you, Mayor Mendenhall, for uh, preparing and delivering this budget to us tonight. This brings us to the public hearing section of our agenda. Um, but public hearing section is hearings on specific topics for which we are expected to make decisions. Um, and so the comments should be kept to those topics. If you 
if your comments go off topic, we will ask you to stop, and this will serve as your only warning. If you would like to come out on these public hearing items today, we are accept accepting comments in person and online via Zoom, and you can fill up, you can um, sign up until the hearing is closed. If you are here to speak on something that is not on one of the specific public hearings, then uh, you then hopefully you have signed up for the general comment period of our agenda. If you need to speak with our staff, please raise your hand or in the room or in Zoom, and a staff person will, will assist you. For those of you that are joining on Zoom, our staff person, Achintya Mahajan, can assist you with registration issues or technical issues. Taylor Hill, another staff member, will be calling the names of those who wish to comment based on the order we received those names. If you are on Zoom, you can then unmute, unmute your mic when Taylor calls your name. And each person will have two minutes. Uh, we will call on each uh, person who has signed up to speak. Just as a reminder, our goal is to create a safe space for everyone to share and participate in the meeting. So please follow our public comment rules when making re remarks, disruptions, or threats to anyone's safety are not allowed. Um, our rules of decorum take, a, the, take place as soon as you arrive here or in the Zoom meeting. Um, and be basically be respectful, avoid yelling, profanity, racial slurs, obscene marks, or defamatory, defamatory remarks. Um, and let's see, that brings us to our public hearings. Our first public hearing is for items H1 and H2. They will be heard as one public hearing. They are for grant applications. And before we take public comments, I will turn the time over to Sylvia Richards, a council staff policy analyst, to uh, give us an introduction. Sylvia is online. Thank you, Mr. Chair. The city applies for and receives grants which help to support some city programs. Each application is reviewed and then receives a public hearing, which gives the public a chance to comment on them. As mentioned, there are two grants tonight. First is the UDOT Safe Grant Program. If awarded, funding will construct a sidewalk along Redwood Road from 900 South to Indiana Avenue and make crossing improvements to the Redwood, Redwood Road and Indiana Ave intersection. Additionally, sidewalk curb and gutter will be upgraded. Second is the Comcast Project UP grant. If awarded, funding will be used to provide sub-awards to local nonprofits which administer refugee settlement programs. Refugees will receive digital literacy courses and laptops. Again, these are grants for which the city has applied. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Sylvia. Um, Taylor, please start with our first public comment. Thank you, Mr. Chair. There is no one registered to speak to these items. All right. Um, uh, I will have motion. Uh, yeah, Mr. Chair, I move that the council close the public hearing and refer items H1 and H2 to a future consent agenda for action. Second. Second. Uh, motion from Council Member Dugan, second from Council Member Young. Any discussion to this motion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. Motion passes unanimously. That brings us to item H3, which is an ordinance about the ballpark station area rezone and text amendments. Uh, I will first turn the time over to Nick Tarbett, another council staff policy analyst, to give a short introduction. Nick is here in person. Um, thank you. This petition would implement the recommendations of the ballpark station area plan through the following zoning amendments. Rezone properties to align with the goals, policies, and future land use recommendations, and establish a new zone, the form-based mixed use 8, and rezone some properties within the ballpark station area to MU8. Thank you. Uh, Taylor, before we start public comment, I just want to make, to clarify for the record, uh, for those of you who pay really close attention to city council meetings, I did not participate in the work session on this. I, I recused myself out of an abundance of caution. We further clarified with the attorney's office that it's okay for me to be part of this public hearing. And when it comes to the time to vote, I, I will be able to vote on the ordinance, except for the parcels um, that uh, I own. So there will be two separate motions when it comes to voting time, but I'm okay to stay here for this. So um, Taylor, please go ahead and start with the first comment. Thank you, Mr. Chair. There are four people registered to speak to this item. The first will be N Canada, followed by Sharon Wilbur, and then August Watcher. 
N, you may now unmute. Hi, N Canada District 5. While I am super pro um, upzoning, which I think the rezoning does in a number of parcels, um, I think one thing I want the City Council to consider more seriously is how we can actually increase ownership as well as density. Currently, um, you know, I think there was a study or there was a paper that was put out that Salt Lake City, in order to own a home, uh, you have to be making annually 106, 120K or 120 to 130K, um, which only I think 22 to 25% of people actually make in the city um, or in the country at large. So while increasing density is good, if all of them are rentals and the rent can't be controlled in any way, then we have a situation where you know the rents are increasing, no one can buy in at a lower place, um, and it continues to snowball, and ownership will continue to decrease in the city. Thank you. Thank you, Taylor. Please go to the next comment. Next is Sharon Wilbur, followed by August Watcher and then Amy Hawkins. Sharon, you may now unmute. Sharon, are you with us? Yes, can you hear me now? Yes. Thank you. Thank you for your time. As owners of the commercial properties on 1300 South between Main Street and Richard Street, we submitted a letter to the council voicing our opposition to the new MUA zone designation of these parcels. We feel strongly that they should be zoned CC in keeping with their historical use and to accommodate the long-term leases that we have with our tenants. We want to make sure that you receive that letter and we invite any comments or questions that you might have for us in this regard. Thank you. Thank you, Sharon. Taylor, please go to the next comment. Next is August Walter, followed by Amy Hawkins. My August, comment, oh, sorry. My comment was supposed to be in the general comment section, not this one. All right, yeah. staff, if you could please help adjust the August's comment. Then next is Amy Hawkins, who's here in person. Hi there. Uh, my name is Amy J. Hawkins, and I'm delighted to serve as chair of the Ballpark Community Council. And I want to applaud my community members for showing up to engage on this stationary plan and this rezone uh, online, on comment boards, on post-its, on walking tours, and community council meetings. They just kept showing up. It was so great. We understand that fixed rail goes through our neighborhood and we hope to capitalize on the opportunities that it provides for economic development, the ability for folks to live in what's almost a 15 minute neighborhood without displacing our committed residents and businesses, allowing folks the opportunity to age in place without sacrificing affordability or community safety. These desires sound completely reasonable to residents and yet are not an easy ask in one of the most rapidly developing neighborhoods in one of the most actively growing metropolitan areas of the United States. So thank you in particular to city planners Brooke Olson, John Anderson, and Nick Norris who showed up and listened to our comments with empathy. We are grateful that city planners heard about our need for green space in the neighborhood and adjusted some expectations for landscaping in the area and the ballpark rezones. I understand that some view preserving setbacks as a way to make housing unnecessarily more expensive, but in a community that has serious disparities in our urban tree canopy, in public park space, in health outcomes like childhood asthma, and has a demonstrable heat island effect, removing all setbacks removes our remaining opportunities to grow our urban tree canopy and protect our future residents. We hope that these landscaping considerations prove to preserve the little mature tree canopy that we have and maintain some opportunities to actually expand our urban tree canopy. We seek this not to preserve some Norman Rockwell vision of the neighborhood, but to help sequester the carbon and, and mitigate our heat Time. that we'll produce into the future. Thank you for investing in our neighborhood. Thank you. You can, if you have more, please submit it by email or you know how to get a hold of us. <laughs> All right. Um, uh, Taylor, was that the last comment? 
Yes, that was the final comment for this item. Great. Uh, I will look for a motion. Mr. Chair, I move the council close the public hearing and defer action to a future council meeting. Do I have a second? Second. Motion from Councilmember Dugan, second from Councilmember Lopez Chavez. Oh. Uh, Any discussion to this motion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. All right, this brings us to our next item, eight, item H4, which is an ordinance for MUA zone sign text amendments. Nick, Nick Tarbett, Council of Policy Staff Analyst, will give us a introduction to this as well. Thank you, Mr. Chair. This proposal would amend the city sign code to establish sign regulations for the proposed MU8 zoning district. Thank you, Nick. Taylor, please start with our first comment. Thank you, Mr. Mr. Chair. There is no one registered to speak to this item. All right. Seeing as there are no comments, I will look for a motion. Mr. Chair, I move that the council close the public hearing and defer action to a future council meeting. Second. Motion from Councilmember Dugan. Second from Councilmember Lopez Chavez. Any discussion of this motion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. Motion passes unanimously. This brings us to item H5. Item H5 is a resolution for the North Point Area Annexation Initiation. Nick Tarbett again will join us to give us an introduction. Thank you, Mr. Chair. This public hearing pertains to the annexation process of land located in unincorporated portions of Salt Lake County, generally located north of 2200 North along 2200 West within the area identified as the North Point community. Thank you, Nick. Taylor, please start with our first comment. Thank you, Mr. Chair. There are 13 people registered to speak to this item. The first will be Zach Hartman, followed by Jack Gray, and then Edward Gilmore. Zach is here in person. Hey, everybody. Nice to see you. Um, My name is Zach Hartman, um, resident of Park City. I've been hired by the Cross E Ranch and been working with the other landowners. If you don't remember me, I was I represented Epperson and Morehouse in the Northwest Q. Um, we've gathered 250 acres worth of signatures between the different owners, and we prepared a letter that they've kind of agreed on kind of their worries and concerns with the annexation. Um, just because we've got a lot of cover, it's probably good to I can just do the summary of this, and then I'll give you a copy of this with the signatures. Um, we didn't want to sign the consent form because we still had concerns over current uses and future uses um, in the annex area. And we know that'll be handled in a later meeting. Um, And that's why we had a shortage of consent forms signed just out of worry from other residents and us included. So um, Cross E Ranch and its neighbors below will support the annexation into Salt Lake City with the acreages listed below. As long as one, we are able to continue operating as is we are granted legal non-conforming status on existing structures and uses. Three, zoning to M3 will be completed before annexation in the event of future sales. All buffers to the Jordan River and wetlands areas will be determined before annexation. Current elevations will not restrict development or current operations of farming. And I'm gonna hand this over. Thanks, appreciate it. Thanks, you can share that with staff. Next will be Jack Ray, followed by Edward Gilmore, and then Nicole Salt. Jack is here in person. Hi, <clears throat> excuse me. I'm here on behalf of Rudy Reclamation and North Point Reclamation. Together, um, we own uh, over 3,500 acres of land that abuts the northern part of the annexation area. We oppose the inclusion of that northern part of the annexation area. That would be the area north and west of Crossy Ranch. We understand that uh, um, the Gilmores also oppose inclusion of their property within that annexation area. Both the Gilmores and Rudy and North Point have owned these properties for many, many decades. We've owned our property for over a century. We uh, welcome the uh, the actions of Salt Lake City that have been on behalf of uh, the sensitive shoreline areas, but we believe that in this instance, the, that area, the part that's north and west of uh, Crossy Ranch, is best served by not being included um, in the annexation area. And so as adjacent landowners, we oppose the annexation of that portion of the land. Thank you. Thank you. Next is Edward Gilmore, followed by Nicole Salt, and then Soren Simonson. Edward's here in person. Hi, uh, 
I represent the Edward L. Gilmore Jr. property, which is part of uh, what Jack references, the northwest of the Crossy Ranch property. Uh, we uh, operate a, a livestock business there. Uh, a cent it's Centennial Ranch, been there since the late 1800s. Uh, we also we have the Legacy Preserve on the west side, Farmington Bay on the north, and uh, we have no use for municipal services, so we uh, can't see any reason why we would be included in the annexation. We uh, just don't feel it would serve us or uh, serve. Uh, we just want to keep doing what we're doing and not. Uh, have any disruptions so thank you next will be nicole salt followed by soren simonson and then muja karchka nicole is here in person hi my name is nicole salt i am a resident of the north point area um i feel i support the duck club and also the gilmer farm that all adjacent neighbors, unless they want to be part of it, should not be included in the annexation. So that's. Next will be Soren Simonson, followed by Uja Karchka, and then Albert Lopez, Soren's younger son. Good evening, members of the council. As I, my name is Soren Simonson. I'm the executive director of the Jordan River Commission. We're grateful to have Mayor Mendenhall and her staff, uh, who are important partners in the work of the Jordan River Commission. Um, I want to just briefly note that um, the, the annexation proposal for areas north of Cudahy Lane, uh, which is also Center Street in North Salt Lake, uh, is very concerning. Uh, if the intent is to develop that land. Uh, if the intent of the Salt Lake City Council and administration is to preserve it, uh, that is very compatible with the important role and function of this land um, within the duck clubs, which are preserved in perpetuity and the legacy nature preserve. Developing that land north of Cudahy Lane would be extremely detrimental and would, I, I think, violate many of the principles of adopted city plans to preserve sensitive lands and um, work to expand and um, uh, memorialize the work that we've been doing across the Jordan River corridor to preserve and enhance natural lands and uh, sensitive habitat for wildlife. So I encourage you to look very carefully at annexation north of Cudahy Lane, uh, which several have already referenced this evening in their comments and look for opportunities to preserve and enhance that as uh, both existing agricultural uses in long term to maintain it as open space compatible with the very sensitive areas around the Jordan River Delta as it enters the Farmington Bay uh, watershed area. Thank you. Next will be Luja Krochka followed by Albert Lopez and then Donna Tom. Luja is here in person. Taylor, can you please repeat what name it is next? That's my name. I don't know how my name's on that document. I haven't got signed to that, but I'll talk about it. I don't think I ran up and down post state at MRC. I got bad for about a month or so, but I got kicked out there. I don't live there anymore. So I have nothing really to say about it. I won't be over there to eat too much anymore. So <laughs> but if I stay downtown, so I guess, I guess if they let me stay in there, I don't know where I'm going from there. But I don't know, I don't know how I'm part of this issue. Who signed me up for the ticket? Thank you for your comment. Next will be Soren Simonson, followed by Albert Lopez, and then Donna Tom. Luja is here in person. Hi, I'm Albert Lopez. <clears throat> it's time to see the change for a better world. Let's be the example. 
It's best to keep the people in a safe environment, not to have a large amount of people in one place. The streets would be a lot more cleaner if all people had use of more public restrooms. A sanctioned camp for people who want to live outside in a monitored place and put more people. I think that you may have signed up for the wrong item. It sounds like this this right now is specific to the North Point area annexation. You called my name though. I know. I think we may have gotten a little okay, bit of a mistake. So we'll work with, I'm so sorry to cut you off. We'll work with staff Fine, to make sir. sure you get re-registered for uh, the general comment as it sounds like that was a mistake. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Okay. My apologies. Next will be Donna Tom, followed by Heather Lyman, and then Dallin Hinkley. Okay. Yep. Oh. Sounds like Donna was for general comment as well, Taylor. Heather Lyman, followed by Don Hinckley, and then Cindy Cromer. Okay, I am Heather Limon, and we are about the Northwest Annexation. <laughs> um, so I'm the owner of Crossy Ranch, one of the owners, and we are here just to say that we can be in favor of the annexation. We want to stay doing what we're doing. Um, we want all of our property to be part of the annexation so we're not divided in half. Uh, that's very important to us. We have been here for many generations out here in this area, and we would like to stay. Um, farming has become increasingly difficult in an urban area. Uh, we have resorted to going to festivals and entertaining people through agriculture, which has been actually a lot of fun. Um, and But there are a few challenges with that. And so we would like to, like I said, stay doing what we're doing, but also have the ability that in an economic downturn or when farming doesn't become um, feasible, that there is a way to economically get out of that. <laughs> um, we know that there are a few farmers around us who have bigger plots of land and are able to stay farming, and we want them to be able to do that too and work, work with them to make it be the best place out in that area that is possible and a really an asset to the community right here close to Salt Lake City. Thank you for your comment. Next is Dallin Hinckley, followed by Cindy Kromer, and then Heidi Hoven. Dallin's here in person. <clears throat> That's me. Um, I am the other owner of Crossy Ranch, and we're grateful to be able to be with you guys this evening. We are excited about the annexation and its potentials and some of the utilities and things that it could bring to our events. For those of you that may haven't visited Crossy Ranch, which is a travesty, we do like Heather said, large events where we invite the public to come and engage with agriculture. And right now it's a lot of fun, but there are some significant challenges as we grow with having that many people out there and engaging them with restrooms and facilities to eat or to rest. And so we look forward to Salt Lake City's ability to provide some of those utilities for us. In that same breath, I think uh, as Zach and Heather have mentioned, we're pretty concerned about how city regulations interact in a really rural area until those utilities and things would reach us. And so things like, you know, how do we handle parking lots? How do we handle our regulations until we get some of the sewer and water things? And how much does that cost us versus what can the city help with? And so we're, we're really excited about the options. We're in favor of the annexation. And, and I think that we have a, a large group of neighbors and friends that think it can be good for them as well if we can make it work with all parties. And so we just, you know, are excited for you guys to read the great little letter we wrote you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for your comment. Next is Cindy Cromer, followed by Heidi Hoven, and then Eric Horn. Cindy's here in person. It was late in the spring of 2022 when Salt Lake County adopted the West General Plan. The North Point Small Area Plan did not go to the Planning Commission for its initial hearing until October. And then there was another one in December of 2022. Then the mayor, thank goodness, had to intervene and pull back the Planning Commission's recommendation. 
And that was also the month that the just unbelievable carnage started on 2200 West. I want to tell you that after seeing what has happened on 2200 West over the last 16 months, the pollution, the disregard for people who are already there with their investments, um, I, I really don't have confidence that the city can step in because it hasn't on 2200 West. It has really been horrid. My computer is full of images that are inexcusable, and I just want you to know that this has to come with a whole revamping of administrative services if you're going to do this. Because the city had an opportunity to do better on 2200 West, and it didn't. Thank you. Next will be Heidi Hoven, followed by Eric Orm, and then Michael Litchfield. Heidi, you may now unmute. Thank you. This is Heidi Hoven. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. I am the senior manager at Gilmore Sanctuary out on Great Salt Lake and am part of Audubon Rockies, a regional office of the National Audubon Society. I'm speaking on behalf of the importance of the hemispherically important wetlands and uplands as habitat along this area that we are referring to. We have met with council members and provided content numerous times regarding the ecological relevance to setting aside a shoreline heritage area to adjacent to the, these important wetlands to protect the wetlands, to protect the uplands of Great Salt Lake. I, I'm not sure um, how to phrase this other than saying that I support the inclusion of a shoreline heritage area and a transfer of development rights uh, potential uh, as a sending area within this uh, area of the North Point, primarily the, the uplands immediately across from the wetlands and the, the Gilmore's property um, that have adjacent uplands to these wetlands. Um, although I can't speak on behalf of the Gilmore's, but they are primarily the owners up there. But I just uh, wish that and support the um, inclusion of these types of conservation tools to protect these important wetlands and have the, the wildlife and birds that they support. Um, from development that's encroaching upon this area and the humans that live there. Thank you. Thank you for your comment. Next will be Eric Horn, followed by Michael Litchfield. Eric's here in person. Hey, Council. Um, <clears throat> like, I, like she said, my name is Eric Horn, and I am a property owner in the unincorporated area of the proposed um, annexation. Um, back in August, one of the city council members held a neighborhood meeting at the Mosquito Abatement Center regarding the annexation. Um, the takeaway or conclusion from that meeting was that the majority of the property, property owners in the in unincorporated Salt Lake County didn't wish to be annexed until we knew what we were getting with the small area plan, which has now been approved, but more importantly, the zoning. Somehow that wasn't communicated effectively and we feel the card is being put before the horse with this annexation. In the letter that Crossy Ranch has put together um, that's been discussed um, with signatures from the majority of the individual property owners in the unincorporated area, there are a few items that I'd like to highlight. Um, the majority of us are in favor of the annexation, but an annexation where we know what we are getting we would like to see the M3 zone approved before annexation, and we would all like the specifics detailed in it. For example, the specifics of the wetland buffer have been omitted from the M3 zone draft. Um, we would like to see those detailed wetland buffers included in the M3 zone um, amendment as the buffers for the Jordan River have been included. It seems logical that we should know the specifics of the zone that will inevitably be applied to our properties. And further, we request that uh, to be annexed into the M3 zone rather than having to come back before the city council for an inevitable zone change. 
Thank you for your time. Thank you. Next will be Michael Litchfield, who's here in person. Thank you, members of the City Council. My name is Michael Litchfield. I represent the owners of the TNS Airport parcel at the northern end of the proposed annexation. We are in favor of the annexation. I think it's helpful to understand what this area does and does not include. This is an area between I-15 and the Salt Lake City Airport north of I-80. The northern end is just barely beyond the continuation of Center Street in North Salt Lake where it crosses into unincorporated uh, Salt Lake County. This proposal does not contain shoreline of the Great Salt Lake, does not contain Duck Club land, and only a very small portion of the holdings of the Gilmore family in this area. Thank you. Thank you. That was the final register comment for this item. Thank you. Um, council members, I will look for a motion. Uh, I move that the council close the public hearing, that we immediately amend the boundaries for the proposed annexation to remove any properties north of 3300 North and defer action to a future council meeting. Do I have a second? I have a motion from Council Member Petro and a second from Pause. Council I don't Lopez know that I Chavez. did that correctly, even with coaching and from Nick. And we have staff, which means we did something wrong. No, I, I think I gave you the wrong address earlier. I think we want to say Cudahy Lane, which is approximately 3200 North. That was my fault. I apologize. I would like to remove all properties north of Cudahy Lane, which is approximately 3200 North. Thank you. Still second. That's the amended motion. Second. Okay, so the motion is from Councilmember Petro and the second is from Councilmember Lopez Chavez. Does everyone understand the motion? Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know that I can repeat it. The amend, uh, close the public hearing, amend defer the boundaries. action, but also remove any property north of Cudahy Lane. Amend the, amend the boundaries to remove all properties north of approximately 3200 North, which is Cudahy Lane. This is all my fault. I apologize to everybody. <laughs> <laughs> that would split some of the property owners in half on I'm there. I'm trying, Gilmore's. I'm trying. <laughs> Can you direct staff to work with the yeah. recorder's office and the property owners? The, the um, Crossy Ranch wants to keep all of their property in yep. the annexation. We'll get that. Correct. Okay, sorry, so my please. amended motion again <laughs> is I move that the council close the public hearing and that we direct staff to work with property owners and with planning staff to create an amended boundary reflective of the constituents' requirements and defer further action to a future council meeting. Yeah? Can I get city attorney like to... I, I think that gives us direction. I, think we... I, I would like our city recorder to weigh in. I think what we're concerned about is a motion that might potentially start the process from the beginning. Mm which I, I'm not sure that that's what people want with at this point. So I think it might be important um, if, if the motion language can be to evaluate and work with staff and defer action till the next uh, to a future amended. council meeting <laughs> to be sure that we're, we're clear on the process. So my new amended motion is uh, I move that the council close the public hearing and Evaluate, it, evaluate potentially modifying the boundaries and defer action to a future meeting. Evaluate potentially modifying boundaries and defer action to a future meeting. Second. Okay. <laughs> Any discussion on the motion? Just, yeah, I actually would like okay. to. Um, this, annexation, this annexation functions on a few levels. We require it for um, the airport, some of our important projects to go forward. We also, part of the d issue with 2200 West was that part of the area, 2900 West was supposed to have been constructed. The by right construction that happened on the Scannell property is what left us in a position to not 
be able to enforce. Um, it's why I've pushed so hard for the small area plan and for the developer agreement combined with, I don't love M1, but at least with a developer agreement, it protects us from distribution centers and PM 2.5 and radical amounts combined with some design standards. Um, so the, the construction of 29 West, which will take the pressure off of both 32 West, which is almost immediately adjacent to the duck clubs, and 2200, which is where our residential lie. Um, it is my intention for those places that we've removed to work hard to preserve the agricultural experience um, in that northern area. The development pressures have not creeped up that way. And so in working with landowners to, to find ways to do agricultural cons conservation easements, uh, protect, you know, other sort of conservation easements is um, my unabashed goal moving forward um, once we work on this annexation. But this annexation functions on a couple different levels that support really, really important city priorities that will eventually inure to the benefit of our constituents and to the environment. Thanks, Councilman Preacher. Councilman Wharton. Um, just that I've, uh, in my time on the council, we've had a lot of, almost all of our annexation discussions have been about the northern part of Salt Lake City in this, these last few unincorporated areas. Um, so I would just encourage, um, and I, I hope I'm not conflating some of the comments that I heard, but I felt like I heard some of the commenters saying that they might be open in that northern area to be part of the city if they had a clearer picture of what the zoning would be. Um, so I would love to annex in as much as we can um, and uh, preserve people's current use um, and not have to come back and do yet another re-annexation um, or another annexation. Um, so if there's a way to, to move forward um, and allow those that are north of this um, roughly 3200 north border to come in under the current land use, then I would be in favor of that. Any other comments? Okay, seeing none, I'll call for a vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Okay. Any opposed say nay. The motion passes unanimously. All right, that does bring us to the next item, H6, which is an ordinance regarding attached garages. This is a zoning text amendment, and Brian Fulmer will give us a short introduction. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Proposal from the administration to update standards primarily for attached garages, but also includes design elements for attached structures, entrance landings, and building foundations. The text amendment would better align city code with state code. Thank you, Brian. Taylor, please start with the first comment. Thank you, Mr. Chair. We do not have anyone registered to speak to this item. All right, Mr. seeing as there's nobody, I will Mr. call for motion. I move that the council close the public hearing and adopt the ordinance. Second. We have a motion from Council Member Pui and a second from Council Member Young. Just uh, for my clarity, that was to close and adopt. Okay, any discussion to this motion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. Motion passes unanimously. That brings us to item H7, which is a rezone at approximately 536 South, 200 West. Brian Fulmer will give us an introduction. This is a proposal to amend the zoning map for pri five properties near 536 South 200 West, which are currently zoned D2 or Downtown Support District to D1 or Central Business District. Some council members may recall a similar rezone from D2 to D1 for an adjacent property to the north adopted by the council in July of last year. No, no development plans have been submitted at this point. Thank you, Taylor. Please start with the first comment. Thank you, Mr. Chair. There's one person registered to speak to this item. That will be Jason Bull, who is here in person. Council members, I want to thank you and staff uh, for your thoughtful approach uh, to this application. I appreciate the time I've been able to interact um, in regards to it. I just wanted to reiterate a few points uh, about this application. Um, that the property owner Overmore Group is requesting the rezone from D1 to D2. Um, this application we feel does accomplish the, the city's goals to expand higher density to more intense uses uh, and developments in the downtown core of Salt Lake City. 
Uh, also, it promotes uh, the ability to improve safety, especially pedestrian vehicular safety at the intersection of um, 200 West and Orchard Place. Additionally, uh, in this application does align uh, the transportation and land use uh, and land uses and reduces has the potential to reduce the vehicle trips uh, and encourages downtown living. Again, we're thankful for uh, your time uh, on this application and look forward to your decision. Thank you. Thank you for your comment. Ms. Taylor, was that the final comment? That was the final comment for this item. Right, I'll look for a motion. Mr. Chair, I move that the council close the public hearing and defer action to a future council. Second. Motion from Councilmember Dugan, second from Councilmember Lopez Chavez. Any discussion to this motion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. Motion passes unanimously. That brings us to item H8, which is an ordinance for a zoning map amendment at 1050 West, 1300 South. Brian Fulmer will give us an introduction. This is a proposal from the administration to amend the zoning map for an approximately 1.4 acre vacant city owned parcel at 1050 West, 1300 South in City Council District 2 from its current R1 5000 or single family residential zoning designation to RMF 30 or low density multifamily residential. The administration has not prepared a development plan yet, but affordable housing would likely be developed on the site if the proposed zoning map amendment is approved by the council. Thank you, Brian. Taylor, please start with the first comment. Mr. Chair, we do not have anyone registered to speak to this item. Thank you. Seeing that there are no comments, I will look for a motion. Mr. Chair, I move that the council close the public hearing and adopt the ordinance. Second. Motion from Councilmember Pui and a second from Councilmember Dugan to close and adopt. Any discussion to this motion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. Motion passes unanimously. We are on to item H9. We're going to make it, guys. Uh, this is a budget amendment number five for fiscal year 2023 through 24. And Ben Ludke, uh, another council policy staff analyst, will give us an introduction. There are 27 proposed items in budget amendment number five. The total expenditures are over $67 million. Some of the largest items include $22 million for additional interest expenses on bonds the airport took out for the terminal redevelopment project, $15 million to a CIP holding account for to-be-determined capital maintenance projects. There's $7 million for upgrading utilities on 2100 South during that street reconstruction project later this year. There is also $3 million from the state government as additional funding for road repairs and irrigation replacements in the Avenue's city cemetery. The updated staff report and the administration's revised proposals are in today's meeting packet. And the budget website is updated regularly. You can find it at tinyurl.com forward slash SLCFY24. Thanks. Thank you, Ben. Taylor, please start the first comment. Um, there is one person registered to speak to this item. That will be in Canada. And you may now unmute. Sorry, quick question. Is this for the budget that Aaron just presented or is this for something else? This is for a budget amendment number five for the current fiscal year. So it is not on the budget that the mayor just represented. Okay, no comment then. Thanks. Thank you. Mr. Chair, I move that the council close the public hearing and adopt an ordinance amending the fiscal year 2024 final budget of Salt Lake City, including the employment staffing documents only for the items as shown on the motion sheet. I further move that the city seek reimbursement for item A8 from the Utah Fair Park Area Investment and Restoration District. Second. Okay, the motion is from Council Member Dugan. The second from, is from Council Member Wharton. Um, is there any discussion to this motion? Just to clarify for the record, that's to adopt these items. The remainder will stay open. Correct. Okay. Um, any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. 
Um, that motion passes unanimously. We are on to item H10, fiscal year 2024-25 budget for the Metropolitan Water District property tax proposal. Uh, Sam Owen, who is joining us online, will give us an introduction. Thank you, Mr. Chair. The Metropolitan Water District of Salt Lake and Sandy stores, treats, and conveys culinary water supplies for Salt Lake City and Sandy City. This year, the district is proposing a property tax increase, which would generate new property tax revenue from Salt Lake City taxpayers of an estimated $6.77 million. Cost impact from the tax proposal to a residential property a median value in Salt Lake City or one of uh, $596,000 would be about $49 per year. The district cites an estimated uh, $117.9 million in new capital projects as a primary driver of the property tax proposal, as well as new costs from regional partners for capital and operating requirements. The district supplies a significant amount of culinary water that is sold and distributed through the Salt Lake City water system. Thank you. Thank you, Sam. Taylor, please start with the first comment. Thank you, Mr. Chair. We have one person registered to speak to this item. That will be in Canada, and you may now unmute. Oh, sorry, no comment on this one either. Thank you. Mr. Chair, I move that the council close the public hearing and refer the next refer to the next public hearing on the May 21st agenda. Second. Motion from Councilor Dugan, second from Councilor Pui. Any discussion to this motion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. Motion passes unanimously. We are now on to item H11, Citywide Transportation Plan Connect SLC. Uh, ben Lutke will give us the introduction. The Citywide Transportation Plan sets a 20-year vision for the city. It would replace the 1996 Transportation Master Plan. All city plans, programs, and projects would need to fit under the policy umbrella created by the new plan. There are eight core policies called key moves in the plan, and there are over 60 individual implementation strategies and actions to carry out those key moves. This is a continued public hearing for those who did not speak at the April 16th public hearing. Thank you. Thank you, Ben. Taylor, please start with the first comment. Thank you, Mr. Chair. There are three people registered to speak to this item. The first will be N. Canada, followed by Frederick Jenny, and then MJ Powell. And you may now unmute. Yeah, um, I'm super in love with the kind of the transit plan that increases walkability, um, makes it like more of a walkable city. Um, I do want to emphasize, though, the development around that transit being um, for ownership and not just for rent. Um, so we can increase ownership in the city. Thank you. Thank you. Next is Frederick Jenny, followed by MJ Powell. Frederick is here in person. Good evening. Unless you know who I am. Uh, my name is Frederick Jenny, live in District 4. I first want to express my gratitude to the council and to the mayor for all the city has done to bring the Rio Grande plan forward from being just a citizen proposal to being something that is talked about more and more often. Um, with it becoming a reality with the Connect SLC plan, with mentioning the trenching of the train and bringing our east and west sides together. Uh, I'm also thankful for you listening to concerned citizens and funding the cost and impact analysis by Kim Lee Horn. I wanted to make three requests of the council and one of these is to push forward the reconnecting communities study, which I know that we've received a federal grant for. Um, moving that as quickly as possible so that we can move to get that federal money that's been allocated to that uh, reconnecting communities uh, grant. Um, it's key to getting that solution for the east-west divide, um, which Connect SLC um, mentions as being our greatest transportation problem. Uh, the second is to have the RDA and other agencies, um, the city and powers, including mentions of the Rio Grande plan, so that we can continue to have a united front moving forward as it be to make it more legitimate. Um, the third request is uh, the volunteers behind the plan would like to possibly work in a working session with the council to be able to move this forward even further. That way we're all continuing to move forward together rather than the 
community doing one thing and the council doing another. That way we can do one front and move together. Um, with the Olympics coming, let's not stay at the temporary station that was designated by the council in 98, which is where the current Salt Lake Central is. And let's move back to the 500 West um, right of way as they intended back in 1998. Let's work together to make the city united and great. I thank you all for your time and your work is truly appreciated. Thank you. Thank you for your comment. And next will be MJ Powell. MJ, you may now unmute. Thank you. Good evening, Mayor and City Council members. Um, it's a pleasure to be here virtually with you today. I'm here to support the budget proposal for the transportation master plan. Um, understanding that the east-west divide has been a long-standing issue based on historical redlining and racial and economic indifferences. As we examine things such as the Rio Grande master plan and connecting residents and community members, um, I want to make sure that we also look at ensuring our nightlife is examined when taking, uh, taking public transit home. As we know, during NBA All-Star weekend, that was a long um, examined issue. But when we look at things um, like nightlife downtown and students, um, we're understanding that people may have to commute longer distances. Um, and we want to make sure people can get home late at night. I understand that may be more of a UTA-based issue, but if we're going to use city taxpayer-funded dollars, I think we should also examine the needs of residents um, and, and examining all demographics and usage of that model. Also increasing the time ability and effectiveness of getting buses over from the east to the west side. If you write it often yourself, you'll know that not they're not the most relaxed, pardon me, they're not the most reliable form of transportation. And so that in addition to cycling, I think will be great additions to ensuring that residents can use a sustainable method of getting over um, during good season from east to west. And I think that we should also examine the needs of what we need on the west side and why people um, that take public transit for maybe socioeconomic reasons may have to go to the east side. That may be for work, um, medicine, um, and grocery stores. We have a food desert. So if we can examine those deeper issues, I think that it would be a great plan in the long run. Thank you. And may we also use Olympic funding in the 10-year model if we can use that funding now. Thank you. Thank you for your comment. That was the final register commenter for this item. I'll look for a motion. Mr. Chair, may I make up? Oh, go ahead. Yeah, thank you very much for your comment. Uh, I just want to say I appreciate everybody's comment and feedbacks over the last two uh, sessions and the pushback and the push to do more on this Transit uh, Connect plan. Uh, but I also want to express my gratitude to the Transportation Department on the work that they've done over the, the last, uh, well, three and a half years that I've been on the uh, council but especially on this plan and also on completing a number of bike uh, paths throughout the city. And it was commented last time that the city hasn't done very many plans or any, uh, many uh, bike improvements and bike separations from vehicles, but I'm just going to state a few that the city has done over the last year or so. 900 East northbound bike lanes between 2700 South and the S line. 20th East Pathway from Parley's Canyon Boulevard to Stratford, 700 East, the I-80 overpass. It's a very short one, but UDOT funded it, but we had to push hard for it. And it's great if you take that bike path because it's really easy now to cross uh, 1700 East. 300 West from uh, just north of 2100 South to 900 South. 900 South from I-15 to 11 East. And then parking protected uh, bike lanes on 200 East, 400 East, and from, from 500 South to 900 South. Highland Drive got an integrated multi-use path on the west side through the heartlands of uh, Sugar House, and we're building a permanent trail on Sugar Mount. So the city is moving forward as fast as the money and the staff can allow, and I really appreciate the, all the effort from the Transportation Department in going for the, the uh, Vision Zero and then the street calming and activating the streets for all mul uh, multiple uses. So thank you very much. This is a plan. No plan is perfect, but this is solid bones that we can make some adjustments to as we move forward as necessary. So, Mr. Chair, I will now make a motion. All right, go ahead. <laughs> Thank you. I move that the council close the public hearing and adopt an ordinance replacing the 1996 Transportation Master Plan 
with Connect SLC as a citywide transportation plan. Second. Second. All of us. Motion from Councilmember Dugan <laughs> and a second from <laughs> Councilmember Puy. Uh, any discussion of this motion? The motion is to close the public hearing and adopt. I will call the question. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. The motion passes unanimously. Whew. Okay, we're at the end of our public hearings. We're now on section I. Section I is potential action. The first one is I-1, which is a zoning amendment and at approximately 2760, 2800, and 2828 North to 2200 West. I will look for a motion. All right, I move that the council adopt the rezone subject to the conditions outlined in attachment A. I further move that the following language be added to the form of development agreement. If a package delivery facility is an accessory use at the property, then no more than 25% of the gross square footage of any building on the property shall be used as package delivery facility. Second. Motion is from Council Member Petro and the second is from Council Member Puy. Is there any discussion to this motion? Uh, I was just going to add really quick, Chair. That... Lopez Chavez, go ahead. Thank you. I just wanted to add really quick, um, I can appreciate that OCC met the city uh, it, and has really constructively tried to lead the way in the zoning. Uh, however, I'm interested in, in seeing how this plays out, um, so my vote will reflect that. Uh, I still have concerns about uh, the environmental, um, the impacts that will be produced um, in different emissions, so I, I, I will vote to reflect my concerns today. Councilor Petro. I'd like to thank Councilmember Dugan for working alongside me on this. It was a really wonderful experience for me to watch you um, come in with unique concerns and help shape this and really lead us to, I think, what is the best solution we can have right now for the havoc. Um, like I said earlier, the, the Scannell property was a by right development. We didn't get to tell people what they could or couldn't do. We had no development agreement. We had no enforcement mechanisms. And so while we're in a position to have to wait for the perfect zone, this is an approximation of a really great outcome possibility for the city. We are going to have to be vigilant and enforce and make sure that these things come to pass. But thank you, Councilmember Dugan, for helping us get to a really high precedent so that anyone who's going to take on attempting to do something in this area ha now has really big shoes to step into, and we have the ability to protect constituents and environment alike out there. So I'm particularly grateful for you today. Thank you. Any more comments? All right. I will call the question. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. Nay. Okay. The motion passes six to one with Councilmember Lopez Chavez in the negative. We are moving to item I-2, which is an ordinance for window requirements for new construction within the locals, the city's local historic districts. I will look for a motion. Mr. Chair, I move that the council amend and adopt the ordinance permitting vinyl windows to be installed so long as they are not readily visible from the street, but only as an affordable housing incentive per chapter 21A.52 of Salt Lake City Code. Second. Motion is from Council Member Wharton, second from Council Member Petro. Is there any discussion to this motion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. That motion passes unanimously. We are now to section J, which is the comment section. The first uh, item J1 is comments from uh, questions to the mayor from the city council. Uh, council members, any questions or comments to Mayor Mendenhall? Councilmember Petro. I want to thank our mayor and county mayor, Jenny Wilson, for the hard work this afternoon. Uh, we're all innovating this new path, and I was proud, although we all still have <laughs> a lot of work to do and a lot of details we want to see. I think today was a really great first step, and I want to thank you for your participation and, and helping lead that. Thank you. Any other comments? All right, so that moves us to item J, J2, which is the general comments to the city council. And these are the general comments from the, the public. Um, thank you all for, I know a lot of you are here for this section. Thank you all for waiting. It, we had a lot of things on our agenda before this, but look how much you've learned about municipal government. Um, 
We are now at the general comment portion of our agenda and welcome to your uh, and welcome your comments on any item of interest. If you are joining us after 7.30 and missed the opportunity to sign up, a staff has written comment cards that you can use. You can of course always email us or call our phone comment line. Um, we, uh, so I'll reiterate our uh, rules of decorum, which are, which I said at the beginning of the meeting, uh, no intimidation, no s clapping or snapping or cheering, uh, or otherwise showing affirmation or, or opposition to any of the comments so that everyone feels free to say whatever they feel. Um, Achinti Mahajan, Mahajan from our staff is going to moderate the Zoom and Taylor Hill will be calling commenters in the order that they arrived in the meeting. I'm told that we have about 32, so we might not be able to get to everybody within the one hour, but if, if we're quick, we can. So Taylor, go ahead and start with the first comment. Thank you, Mr. Chair. First will be August Watcher, followed by Albert Lopez, and then Donna Tom. August is here in person. Thank you. Hi, everybody. Mayor Mendenhall, City Council members, thank you for rolling back the fee schedule for youth sports. Your actions today paved the way to make youth sports affordable for all families in our city. Let this not be the end of our work. Let this be the beginning of a lasting partnership between all Salt Lake City nonprofit sports organizations, the city, and anyone else willing uh, to help us pursue our goal of giving every child the opportunity to participate in youth sports. It is vital that our community invest in our youth and give them the, an outlet to get off their devices, off social media, and on a field or a court to play sports. Participation in youth sports has been linked to lower rates of depression, anxiety, and an overall reduced risk of suicide and substance abuse. Simply put, active youth do better in life. I look forward to continuing to adv advocate for improvements to our fields and a fair fee structure that will make the capital city a destination for state youth baseball competitions in the near future. Thank you again on behalf of the 1,500 Salt Lake City Youth Baseball participants. Now that we've accomplished this, I need some help. I have a parking issue at Oak Hills. <laughs> Uh, my parents have been ticketed relentlessly by parking enforcement because we do not have enough parking spaces uh, when our fields have games. Uh, we share a parking lot with a for-profit tennis center uh, that takes up a lot of spots. We've had a good partnership with them. Um, I've reached out to the parking trans transportation director um, and have still not gotten a response to my emails. So if you guys could help me uh, work out this a solution to this problem, uh, we would love it. It's definitely going to create a um, problem uh, for my organization to continue to grow um, and get more kids thank, involved. Thank you for your thank comment. You. Next will be Albert Lopez, followed by Don and Tom, and then Jani Iwamoto. Albert is here in person. Hi, I'm Albert Lopez. Hello, Mayor, my love and respect to you. Okay. And <clears throat> it's time to see the change for a better world. Let's be the example. It's best to keep the people in a safe environment, not to have a large amount of people in one place. The streets would be a lot more cleaner if all people had use of more public restrooms a sanctioned camp for people who want to live outside in a monitored place and put more people on housing. It is good money for the state and people are off the street. <laughs> Thank you for your comment. Okay, might be dismissed, Mayor. Next will be Donna Tom, followed by Jamie Iwamoto, and then Floyd Mori. Donna is here in person. Is Donna here? I think she may have left, Taylor. 
Then we'll move on to Jeannie Iwamoto, followed by Floyd Mori, and then Alan Ernstein. Jeannie's here in person. Thank you so much. I want to thank each of the, um, the city council, I'm going to say county council members, <laughs> and thank you to Mayor Mendenhall and your staff. Um, and in the earlier meeting, I felt all of your commitment to Japantown, and I, f I felt your commitment, Mayor, during the legislative session through your RDA commitment with our streetscape and, and today in the work session. Um, it's interesting that I was here over 20 years ago fighting for Japantown, and we started a group with our community. It was in the late, and to tell you, in the late 1960s, Japantown was obliterated and its whole social structure and everything was uh, taken. Over 90 structures that were reported, own, owned mostly to, by the Japanese American community, were taken by mostly eminent domain. Um, Japantown, uh, Japanese Americans have always supported economic development, but at that time, they were lied to, and there was lack of transparency, and so that, that sad uh, time in our history. I just wanted to say that the Salt Palace and its expansion, including the museum, as well as the, um, the Abravanel Hall, is on what was Japantown and owned by the Japanese community, and it was the heart of the community that was destroyed. So we look forward to the preservation of what we have, the two churches and their related structures, and restoration of what we can in Japantown. That included the, um, the garden that is there now, and that is dedicated to the Issei and Nisei first and second generation pioneers. And also we rededicated it to our um, Nisei soldiers that received congressional gold medals in World War II. And that was done while I was on the county council with Mayor Corinne and our county council and Governor John Huntsman, and it is a county property. Um, there were some specific things. Thank, thank you. The, the two minutes is up, but please give us the rest of your comments by email. And of course, you can always come back at the next general comment meeting. Next is Floyd Morey, followed by Alan Ernstein, and then Christy Hart. Floyd's here in person. Hi, Mr. Chairman, members of the council, Ms. Mayor, I'm very happy to be here. I was uh, born and raised here in Utah, and part of my education throughout my life here was heritage. Uh, it's rich for the state of Utah and the city of, of Salt Lake. Uh, as a former mayor in the state of California, I I've seen the value of preserving heritage. I oversaw a uh, master plan 50 years ago that preserved the heritage of a particular city that I was mayor. And today it's often voted as one of the most family friendly cities in the state of California. Unfortunately, as has been expressed by Janie, uh, past officials here have kind of ignored some of the value of cultural elements of this city. Uh, we all know what happened to Japantown. Japantown is part of my heritage. I remember coming here as a little boy with my father, uh, getting a haircut, going to the stores, the restaurants there. Part of Salt Lake City has been, or Japan has been part of Salt Lake City for over 100 years now. I don't think people understand that, but 100 years, Japantown. <clears throat> and as we look at revitalization of this area of the city, it can be a very vital part of that new part of the city. We can enhance that part of the city and not destroy what has been there in the past. So I applaud members of the council, the mayor, in supporting the idea of enhancing uh, Japantown as we go forward with this revitalization, that it will be a very important and vital part of anything that we do here in the city. So I urge you to continue Hi. that vein. Thank you. Next is Alan Ernstein, followed by Christy Hart and then Mark Ward. Alan is here in person.
I'm Alan Ernston, and I just wanted to uh, promote rooftop solar. Um, however, uh, the power company comes at this issue, their impetus to go out into the desert and create big fields of solar panels, that's one approach that they might value. But I think that every rooftop in Salt Lake should have solar panels on it before the power company gets to go out and spoil the desert. Um, that would mean creating a more uh, evolved grid for everybody that uh, can then feed one another. Neighbors on the left, neighbors on the right, you get the picture. Thank you so much. Thank you for your comment. Next will be Christy Hart, followed by Mark Ward, and then Donna Tom. Christy is here in person. Good evening, council members. My name is Christy Hart, and I am the Director of Finance for the Salt Lake City School District. And tonight I speak to you on behalf of the district. As the Salt Lake City School District and Board of Education ind indicated to the City Council in March of this year, our ongoing obligation is to provide a high quality education to every district student. We are entrusted with limited education dollars with which to accomplish this goal. This obligation and our internal board policy for tax increment financing led us to oppose an increase of our contribution to the State Street CRA budget, as well as recent housing and transit reinvestment zone or HTRZ projects. It is in, in the same spirit that the RDA subcommittee of the Salt Lake City School District Board of Education is voicing our concerns about using tax increment financing for the proposed downtown entertainment district. As we've shared in the past, the city and school district have different charges and we are impacted differently by development. Currently, the school district contributes just over 26 million tax dollars annually to tax increment financing, including RDA and HTRZ project areas. This is the equivalent of 217 teachers annually. Our concerns are compounded by ongoing student enrollment declines. Both the State of Utah Legislative Audit and a demographic reports by Applied Economics show that gentrification and tax increment financing negatively impact our enrollment projections. As a subcommittee, we strongly encourage the council to consider how and whether funds for public school children should be utilized as a tool for development. The additional investment in an entertainment district would divert hundreds of millions in funding that would otherwise be spent on our Hi. public schools. Thank you. Thank you. Next will be Mark Ward, followed by Donna Tom, and then Scoop Ainer. Mark is here in person. I'm Mark Ward. I live in Bountiful, and I work in downtown Salt Lake and also attend services at the Japanese Christian Church, as well as attend the gatherings and festivals that bring hundreds of people into downtown Salt Lake throughout the, uh, the year. My ask is that as you consider plans for developing the district adjacent to the Delta Center that uh, you preserve and uh, maintain and uh, enhance the uh, district of, of Japantown and, uh, and keep it there for future generations. Thank you. Thank you. Next will be Donna Tom, followed by Scoop Painter, and then Ryan Boyle. Tom is here in person. Um, hi, my name is Donna Tom. I just like to uh, like um, put it out there about the homeless. I've been out there walk evading and like walking through the homeless, and been noticing a lot of men and out there just living with uh, women and they just been sheltering the men. And like, we've been having to share like with the men. We've been wondering about the woman, like forecast for them. Like if, if it would be a representation for them to have someone sue for them to like get them a new place to build. Cause if not, I can put into my, my, my future for them. So I just think it's a lot more better for it to go 
the way for the woman instead of the man because they can provide for themselves and they have their homes already and their sons and their daughters to keep them up in their behalf because we've been seeing a lot more men like they do 50 men a night and like 12 or eight women a night so they house more men and then now we have Gail Miller we have to share with the men um, it seems like and then we have more men 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 it's like all the time men 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 like, we wonder if if like we could get a different protocol like a new painting like because that's like one of the kids and like goring them to like, get another pronunciation for us like i know the laws in like my by 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 scripture law and like my 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 uh i say my integrity police officer one like but from the state like as i can see as a pedestrian it's more of a woman's place to be not homeless like to be living in those houses that you moved hi in those homes i think thank you for your comment you can provide the rest of your comment by email if you'd like <laughs> Thank you so much. Your time's up, but please provide the rest of your comment by email. Next will be Scoop Ener, followed by Ryan Boyle, and then Jonathan Alves. Scoop is here in person. Hello, Madam Mayor, City Council. Uh, my name is Scoop Einer, <laughs> and uh, um, I'm a former uh, business owner here in town, and I've been moved out of town for about five years now. Just came back to Salt Lake City last week, found myself homeless. The business that I owned was One World Everybody Eats Foundation and Cafe. And I was back here from 1999 through 2015. And what I have seen in the front of the homelessness here is it's a major problem. And it's more than it was when I left in 2015. I don't know how much you guys see on the floor, on the ground front. But this is a problem that can be solved. And I just challenge you to look at the homeless people that you see down uh, over uh, by the uh, uh, fifth uh, west there and second south and other areas. One of the problems that the homeless have is a challenge is transportation. And transportation was a big subject tonight. And I challenge there to be better transportation for homeless people. They can get unhomeless if they can get transported easier. They can get to the facilities and things that they need if there's more transportation for homeless people. Instead of being an eyesore in the city, we should be challenging and fighting the problem of homelessness, not the people themselves. And um, another issue is uh, restroom facilities and things around town. Uh, most businesses, cut off uh, bathrooms unless you purchase a large meal or something like that. And a lot of people can't afford that. So you're having defecation on the streets, which is sad. And it's right here in Salt Lake City. It's a beautiful city. I'm glad to be back. I'm hopefully I'll be out of my situation soon, but I want to help others get out too. And I hope all of you do too. Thank you. Thank you. Next is Ryan. Reminder to please avoid clapping and Snapping. Next will be Ryan Boyle, followed by Jonathan Alves, and then Ksenia Konosiba. Ryan is here in person. I'm Ryan Boyle. Um, thank you for listening to me tonight. Um, I've been homeless for less than a week, and I've already been attacked. I had all of my very little possessions taken. And um, I got put in a drunk tank for it. Um, when I got out, I was in pants and a t-shirt. So uh, Sunday night, when a big storm hit, um, I was in pretty dire straits. I could have died. And the, and the people that saved me were the other homeless. There are predators out there, and they're hunting us. 
I'm doing the best I can. But I can't do this alone. Thank you. Thank you for your comment. Next will be Jonathan Alves, followed by Ksenia Konosiva, and then Jessica Lyman. Jonathan's here in person. My name is Jonathan Alves. Thank you for uh, having me here. So I've been homeless for about, I would say a year now. And I wanna thank the facility that accepted me. They gave me a home to stay, they gave me food. And I'm, great, I'm really grateful to them. This could be improved, like hot water. We don't have any hot water right now. Now for the men or the women, we have to be showering in cold water, which is, who wants to be showering in cold water, let's be honest. So I think that could be fixed. It's an easy issue that could be fixed. Um, also, the, um, the transportation, like the gentleman was talking about, that could be improved too. I feel like there could be more transportation and maybe more uh, access to the public on that. So we can go ahead, we can go ahead and get that improved as well. Um, also, uh, I just uh, noticed uh, just the, everything in Utah has gotten really expensive. The, the cost of living has been going up and the, po the homeless population has been increasing. And there has to be something done about that. I don't know what could be the solution, but I think with brilliant minds, we can come with, that, with a solution to that. Why are the prices going up and why is the homeless population increasing? That's not normal. So I just like to say those few quotes. Uh, thank you for your time and you have a, and you have a re great rest of your day. Thank you. Thank you for your comment. Next is Ksenia Konosuva, followed by Jessica Lyman, and then Alex Ames. Ksenia is here in person. Hi again. You're probably so sick of listening to me. Um, but I hope you're not sick of listening to them because their voices really do matter. And it's important that they get to share their experience with you today. Um, can I get a hands up from anyone who's unsheltered here today? Who else? Over there? <laughs> Raise your hand. <laughs> um, how many of you have experienced unsheltered homelessness? Have spent a night not knowing where you're going to sleep? Have spent time in a shelter? Anyone else? It's, it's a lot more than we think. And as you can see, people are just one week on the street just two months on the street and it keeps getting worse. We're here to ask for specific things, bathrooms, shower, laundry facilities. I just found out there's no cold, there's no hot water at the weekend. Imagine it's this cold and they're having to take cold showers. I mean, one of life's greatest pleasures is a hot shower. And we all have that, they don't. Um, we need laundry, we need deeply, deeply affordable, deeply low barrier housing. Michelle Flynn in a recent meeting said, the shelter system that exists as of right now is medium barrier. There is no truly low barrier system out there. And we see that with how many people are getting kicked in and out of the pod community, with how many rules there are in every single housing situation that exists for this population. We need to reinvent and rethink outside the box or else we will still continue to have people living outside in these horrible, deplorable conditions, women being abused, men being abused, it's, we can do better. Sanctioned campgrounds, safe parking spaces, mobile showers, all of this. You know, I took a man for his fifth time for a bowel blockage Hi. in five months. Thank you, Ksenia. And you stumped me on the rules. I'm being told though that, uh, please direct your comments to us as a body and not interaction with the crowd. Um, but you got me because I wasn't sure. <laughs> uh, next comment, Taylor. Next is Jessica Lyman, followed by Alex Ames and then Misty Myers. Jessica's here in person. 
Hello, City Council and Mayor Mendenhall. Thank you so much for the time that you guys are spending tonight listening, actively listening, empathetically listening. I appreciate your position of power to do something to influence the structure in our city when it comes to housing. I appreciate the effort that's going into affordable housing in the budget. I look forward to reading more into that. I, when I found the Nomad Alliance and Casinia in 2021, I had just gotten divorced and I lost my home. COVID, I lost my ability to have my children with me. As a mother, my children have suffered, I have suffered. Um, I was living in my car and I, having a safe and legal place where I could park is what kept me off of the streets. I feel like it would be so simple to have porter potties and trash cans near where they're setting up their tents so they can clean up after themselves and relieve themselves in a way that's not going to end in a felony. Literally, I was peeing in a bucket in my car because gas stations would not give me a toilet if I could not pay. As a mother of four children, I am an my ex-husband was a military spouse. My father was the army. I have been civically involved for a very long time. I would like to request a reinvestigation into the grants program and, and ask that we reconsider giving the grants to the Nomad Alliance. As you can see, they are actively on the ground speaking for the people, helping the people. The blue bus that the Nomad Alliance renovated has kept people warm and dry and fed literally out of our own pockets. I live in a two bedroom apartment with seven people, three active incomes, and we can hardly afford groceries. So I humbly request that you really consider the conditions that are Hi. keeping people homeless. Thank you for Next. the comment. Next will be Alex Ames, followed by Misty Myers, and then Jenna Marin. Alex is here in person. Thank you, members of the council, Madam Mayor. My name is Alex Ames. I've been a volunteer with the Nomad Alliance for several years now. And over the course of that time, I've seen the same thing I think everybody else has, namely that homelessness is increasing in the city of Salt Lake and across the state overall. And the more I talk to these people, the more I hear of shelters closing and water getting cut off to public parks and places like that. And from the city, uh, from development projects, it seems all anyone can talk about is how much the city is projected to increase in population, be that from people overseas or domestically. And I just see more and more people on the streets and I wonder what's going on. So I understand the mayor's budget proposal sets aside a certain amount of money for helping to, helping to diminish homelessness in the city. So as a concerned citizen, I myself would propose that a portion of that be set aside through a grant to the Nomad Alliance, since we're the ones helping people on the ground, doing more in the words of the people we're helping than the government is. And uh, I've seen the impact that ordinary people can make with access to no funds from the state, imagine what they could do with it. Thank you. Thank you for the comment. Next will be Misty Myers, followed by Jenna Marin, and then Cad Crosby. Misty is here in person. Hello, City Council. My name is Misty. I'm not really a public speaker. But I want to come here today because I feel very disappointed with how things have gone lately. From all the things I've seen in the news and all the things I've been seeing online, I'm feeling very disappointed with the council and your guys' priorities right now. I'm very saddened by watching this homeless population come up here and like beg and like want like some like attention. I see that you guys put money aside for like making more affordable housing, but have you thought about making homelessness a little more easier to bear instead? I see you put money aside for sports and all these other things, but and I also see you put money aside for like things for like people wanting to like call for a ceasefire in Palestine instead like peaceful protesters are getting arrested. We get signs put up at like a memorial for Palestine. I just feel confused. 
because it seems like this money is being put into things that are not very important. You know, these are people with actual lives. Like people in Palestine, they're like dying, but then everyone's ignoring them. People are homeless and they like are suffering and everyone's ignoring them. So I just want you guys to kind of consider these actual like issues that are affecting lives instead of investing your money into all these other things that just don't matter that much. Thank you. Thank you. Next is Jenna Marin, followed by Cad Crosby, and then Carlos Jaroki. Jenna is here in person. What the hell is wrong with you? Please remember the rules of the quorum. You think you're winning here? You send West Valley City PD to the University of Utah campus, and then you had Michael Valentine arrested not once but twice for the most bullshit reasons you can think of. Security, please. And you think you're. Please escort this commenter out. Taylor, please continue with the next commenter. Next is Kat Crosby, followed by Carlos Jarugui, and then Emily Canada. Kat is here in person. Um, hello, my name is Kale Crosby. The way that I do my cursive makes the E mush with the L, but it's, it's Kale, but it doesn't matter that much. Um, what does matter is the lives of people being lost in Palestine right now. I'm going to try to follow rules of decorum, but I share the passion of the previous commenter. I was at University of Utah protesting, and I was horrified to see the Salt Lake Police Department involved coming in with full riot gear when people were standing in a circle arm in arm, including myself and many other students of the University of Utah. And it was honestly the most terrifying experience of my life. John F. Kennedy says, where peaceful protest is impossible, um, violent uprising is, is inevitable. And I uh, feel those words to my bones. I really am so scared by a world where we cannot like peacefully share our voice, and especially in a world where Rafa, which is the place where people were told to leave to, um, where these innocent Palestinian civilians were told to leave to, is being bombed now. It is so frustrating to see this, this type of thing, and I also feel that oftentimes the council, which I agree with in more, so I used, I used to live in Draper, where it was this full conservative council, and I felt like I could agree with nothing that they did. And now I come here and I see that this council is much more movable, much more like, like, like representative of myself and yet still I feel like this this dragging of the feet like I just I don't see what we are losing by supporting the people of Palestine even just in a small letterhead like I think like we could just say that we are in support of a ceasefire because this problem is not going anywhere I'm I, I really want to call on you guys to not increase police funding until there is resolutions to say that they will not attack students I understand that technically setting up a tent is um, against a uh, code of the University of Utah, but as Martin Luther King Jr. said, we have a moral responsibility to disobey unjust laws, and I do not understand how it is not okay for us to do that. So um, I leave these with you, and I hope that you take this in the spirit it is given. Thank you. Thank you for the comment. Next is Carlos Jargoy, then in Canada, and then Zen Kratjan. Carlos is here in person. Good evening, Council, Madam Mayor. Um, thank you for allowing me to speak. I'm the guy that runs uh, Nomad Alliance bus. I was here the last time, and uh, just want to let you know that we need help with the bus. I mean, there's overwhelming people just coming in and housing them at night. Last night, people came in pouring, wet, cold, no jackets, nothing like that. We need to open a request to open the bathrooms at the park so people can relieve themselves connect the water back up, you close everything up, people go wherever they need to go. It is cheaper to clean the bathroom than to go around the city picking up uh, feces and trash for whatnot. I know that there's got to be a certain amount of control. I, I'm, I'm under Ksenia. I've been doing this for almost four months under no pay. I go around uh, uh, the food banks picking up food so I can feed these people at night because they're hungry and they're cold. We ask, Madam Mayor, you can change this. You're the, at the top. Um, City Council, uh, help us out with this, and please help us out. Thank you. Thank you for the comment. Next is M. Canada, followed by Sense and Rajan, and then Spencer Hardy, and you may now unmute. 
in Canada D5. Uh, three points. First, I think it's time for city council to be a full-time position. Number two, uh, I'm deeply troubled. You saw all the um, homeless and unhoused folks coming to talk and I see them, you know, I live in across from Jefferson Park. I see homeless folks every day and I hear about giving a billion dollars to a development. And I just can't help but see the lack of moral courage and more alignment for our community members. How can we say we're going to give a multi-billion dollar corporation more money? And yet we're not going to give the community who's on the street in the city the support they need. It's just, it's just unconscionable. And also, if we are going to give money to corporation, at least let's have a revenue sharing agreement so we can actually get some money back to then put into the folks who are on the street and get them out of the street. My third is I was at the university on Monday um, when the arrest took place. And as a local Palestinian American, I have felt completely abandoned, not only by this body, but my, by my counselor, Darren Mano, and by society at large, where apparently a genocide is not a red line in the sand. Apparently 40,000 people or 35,000 people, however many it is now, is not a line in the sand. And that is the biggest moral failure. And it's at the federal, it's at the state, it's at the local. So who is supposed to be my voice when I see my people being executed on my screen? When I see the local Palestinian community having no support, who is supposed to be my voice? You listen to the, the, the Jewish community, which is at equal size as maybe local Palestinian community, Arab community, Muslim community. Why is our voice less important? Thank you. Next is Zenzen Krajan, followed by Spencer Hardy and then Valerie Garrison. Zenzen is here in person. It looks like they may have stepped out. We'll go to the next commenter and then come back. Next is Spencer Hardy, followed by Valerie Garrison and then Shasta Lawton. Spencer is here in person. Hi, my name is Spencer Hardy. I'm here today as a concerned citizen of Salt Lake City, District 7. I'm incredibly concerned by the city's recent behavior, uh, specifically the city council's inaction on supporting your Palestinian constituents, silence on genocide that is being funded by our tax dollars, and the offensive signs that were placed outside of this building in front of the memorial for Gaza last week, essentially making a public statement against the memorial. I'm incredibly concerned about the budget proposal this evening to increase funding to our police force. After the violent attacks that took place last week on the University of Utah campus, when the Salt Lake City Police Force violently attacked students and community members peacefully protesting. Oh, I just remembered, I have something. I strongly believe that increased police funding will not make our community safer. I've submitted two strikingly similar images this evening. The first is an image from a protest during the Vietnam War, and the second is an image from right here in Salt Lake City last week. Uh, my question for you is why are we allowing ourselves as a city to make the same mistakes? Why are we as a city allowing violence against peaceful protesters? aligning Salt Lake City with the same horrible violence that's happening nationally against students protesting peacefully. Please do not forget what it is that they are raising their voices against. They are speaking against genocide. Please do not let your own temptation to dictate how your constituents choose to speak up, but rather take a moment to just listen to them. There's a memorial right outside these windows, and you could attend the closing ceremony on Saturday. You could be there in support of that event or of many events that are going on around the city, being led by our Palestinian constituents, community members. So I implore you to do more. I implore you to listen to N's words. Why are we not listening to the voices of our Palestinian constituents 
here in the city? Why are we ignoring their pain? Why are we putting up signs saying we don't support their memorial? What can we do better? Thank you. Thank you. Next is Valerie Garrison, followed by Shasta Lenton, and then Josie Khan. Valerie, you may now unmute. Hi, um, thanks for letting me uh, comment. Um, <clears throat> Valerie from District 6. I'm here to comment on uh, something I know is coming up, which is the billion dollars you want from us for the NHL team. Um, that's a lot of money. <laughs> that is a lot, a lot of money. And you're also putting it in a sales tax, which is something that, you know, affects everyone, including the unsheltered people here today who talked about how they had to pay something to get access to a bathroom. And the the parks bond wasn't that much. The numbers that our mayor put on the screen every for everything here was you know, maybe a couple million dollars. And and there have been hundreds of studies proving that it doesn't help the economy the way that you are saying it does. And I I like to think that, you know, this council in Salt Lake City uses science to make decisions, but I think it's really clear that there's some other motivation going on here. And maybe it's I don't know what it is. I don't know. Maybe it's your your reputation will, you know, live on in infamy if you bring the NHL team here. But I just want, you know, you to go to sleep at night knowing that you're doing it not for the economy, but for whatever other reason it is that maybe you're not telling us. So um, you know, there are clearly other things where money could be used for, and I beg you to consider those. Next is Shasta Lanton, followed by Josie Khan, and then Megan Murphy. Shasta, you may now unmute. I am in District 2, and I am commenting um, uh, and asking the question, why is it that the City Council is refusing to hear so many constituents who are asking for a ceasefire resolution, as well as um, uh, protection for peaceful protesting? Calling for a ceasefire does not mean we're terrorist sympathizers. It means we're human and don't believe in collective punishment for innocent civilians. Over 14,000 children have been killed in Gaza over the last six months with no end in sight, and many times more orphaned and seriously injured. A child is killed by the Israeli army every 10 minutes in Gaza. They're dropping like flies now that forced famine has eaten them up from the inside out. Thousands remain uncounted beneath the rubble. None of this makes Israel safer. This information comes from UNICEF, Doctors Without Borders, Save the Children, Amnesty International, the UN, Ralph Nader, Dennis Kucinich, um, uh, 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 obviously the, the squad. Recently, an elderly Jewish prof uh, tenured professor of Jewish studies at Duke University was thrown to the ground by police, violating her First Amendment rights um, as she was protecting students protesting genocide not calling for the uh, killing of Jews, but protesting genocide at university encampments, which have been peaceful and well organized. She's not the only one. Many respected professors and many Jewish faculty have been arrested while standing in solidarity with their students. Yesterday, Israel began its ground invasion into Rafah, the last ostensible safe zone in Gaza, where over 610,000 displaced children are sheltering. They've already been bombing aerial aerially for weeks. All exits from Gaza are now closed and controlled by Israel. Biden called this the red line that Israel cannot cross, but Israel is doing it with our support, money, and weapons in tow. Children are dying agonizing deaths while Israeli soldiers live stream themselves, dancing on the rubble and mocking the Palestinian plight. This disproportionate Hi. response is not- You can Next. submit the rest of your comment by email or through phone. Next will be Josie Khan, followed by Megan Murphy, and then Meg Griffiths. Josie, you may now unmute. Hi, my name is Josie Khan, um, and I am from District 4. And I just want to say that we have seen inaction, and now we have seen straight up anti-action. And I am here to echo the voices of my fellow peers and community members tonight who have so eloquently spoken out about this. I'm a student at the University of Utah, and the university here had one of the um, was one of the fastest encampments in the country to get torn, out, torn down. 
The excessive police violence that I witnessed was horrifying, but the genocide in Palestine is deeply horrifying. And I just want to reiterate these points call for a ceasefire in Palestine and ask to ensure that peaceful protesters here at the University of Utah that are speaking on this genocide be allowed grace and their rights to free speech and assembly. And all eyes on Rafa right now. Thank you. Thank you for your comment. Next will be Megan Murphy, followed by Meg Griffiths, and then MJ Powell. Megan, you may now unmute. Thank you. This is Megan Murphy, and I am with the NOMAS, and I am so upset to hear that you're spilling so much money out to the NFL, to, to the hockey team when there's children and and children and mothers and fathers out there. I go to the park every first Sunday of the month, and there's so many, so many hungry, hungry people where we just can go to the fridge and get all the food we want and take a warm shower and a nice warm bed and watch TV. And they're out. They're outside right now, freezing to death. And all they want is a million dollars just to run that beautiful bus that we have. Beautiful bus is just so great for them. Give them the money, please, 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 please. Thank you for your time. Next will be Meg Griffiths, followed by MJ Powell, and then Shadid Gray. Meg, you may now unmute. My name is Meg Griffiths. I'm here to comment, echoing a lot of the sentiments that you've already heard. Um, I am pro-Palestine and very disappointed that over the last several months we have come and made public comment and not been heard. Um, we would still love to see things like a ceasefire resolution coming from the city council. Um, and we will uh, continue fighting in the streets despite um, the, the allocation and the desire for the city to have police disrupt us violently. Um, I think that I would much rather, like many people have been saying, um, for my tax dollars to go into the hands of our community members that people need it. There's been a lot of talk on the city council for um, for decorum when there's a genocide in in Gaza, um, and that seems a uh, very quite dystopian to us. And then we kind of get onto the streets, and um, our tax dollars bring in uh, police with riot gear from five different police departments. They arrest our community members. I don't want my tax dollars going to that. I don't want my tax dollars going to um, sports developments from p billionaires who have the money to already do those things. I want my tax dollars to go to local people. I want them to go to the homeless people. I want them to go to um, not uh, brutalizing our students on campus. I want us to defund and divest from um, companies and weapons manufacturing that go and are brutalizing the people, uh, the Palestinian people. And I don't understand why our voices aren't being heard when we are talking about the Palestinian cause. And I just issue for the city council to actually hear us and do something about it. Next will be MJ Powell, followed by Shadid Gray and then Charles Gilmore. MJ, you may now unmute. Good evening again, Madam Mayor. Um, administration, as well as city council and council staff. I'm here to reiterate some concerns. There were peaceful protests this last week when, in which state police um, and under potentially municipal or county enforcement, I know Salt Lake City Police was there and as a former racial equity and policing commissioner, I'm here starkly to remind everyone of their commitment of why we gave a $21 million budget increase. And it certainly was not to go abuse um, a majority of student protesters with riot gear over encampments. If that was a sanctioned, a sanctioned abatement, then why wasn't there a 24 hour posting like there are in other places? Why are we bringing the fist and hammer down when people are here to protest and express their first amendment right? I'm also here to say after Holocaust Remembrance Day, I'm here to stand by the Jewish community of Salt Lake City for the largest attack against the Jewish population since the Holocaust. 
think it's important that we speak up on every atrocity and we speak up on a, a Remembrance Day beyond a simple proclamation or posting. These are real people, these are real lives, and anti-Semitism is at an all-time high. I'll remind people that anti-Semitism embodies both the Arab and Jewish populations, right? And so when we talk about the rhetoric that is spilled at these protests, I think that we also preserve a space of peace and business for students to graduate, get through their business as usual, but certainly using rubber bullets and fierce intimidation tactics against uh, a majority peaceful, unarmed, and student demonstrators at a public university should be shameful and frowned upon. And that Chief Brown should be more fair and less impartial in his media release. Thank you so much for your time and all respect to all who serve. I have a great evening. Uh, Next will be Shadid Gray, followed by Charles Gilmore. Shadid is here in person. It looks like they've left. Move on to Charles Gilmore, who should be here in person. Is Charles with us? They may have left as well, Taylor. Then that was the final registered commenter. We did it. Oh. If, uh, you, if you didn't register before 7.30, unfortunately, we can't accept the general comment. Did, did we miss a registration card, Taylor? Can, uh, what, what's the name so we can make sure that? I, I, didn't, I didn't hear that. Alexander Benitez Mendenhall, is that on the list? Feel free to email or call the 24-hour comment line. And then, of course, uh, the, the next public comment, just make sure to turn in your card before 7.30. All right. I think that brings us to the end of the public comment period. Um, that brings us to section L, which is unfinished business. Um, let's see. Are we on section L? Let me just double check. Mr. No. Chair. Yeah, I skipped. Sorry. Thank you. Mr. Chair. Yes. yes. Uh, on K1, I would like to make a motion. Thank you. Sorry. We're on Section K. Uh, this is. A, go ahead, Councilor Pui. I would like to make a motion. Uh, I move that the council initiate a legislative action, legislative action starting the process for city staff to research and draft an ordinance that would allow live performance theater use either indoors or outdoors in the general commercial zone and other districts that may be appropriate based on the, on the intensity, scale, and location of the district by changing the title Theater Live Performance to Theater Live Performers, Performance Indoor or Outdoor in the Land Use Tables. Second. Okay, motion is from Councilor Pui, second from Councilor Dugan. Is there any discussion to this motion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. That motion passes unanimously. Item K2 is another legislative action. Mr. Chair, I move that the council initiate a legislative action starting the process for city staff to research and draft an ordinance that would change the years a, rec or a reconstructed historic building must be protected for 50 years from 25. Second. Okay, motion is from Council Member Wharton, second from Council Member Pui. Any discussion of this motion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. Motion passes unanimously. We are on item K3. Mr. Chair, I move that the Council suspend the rules and adopt the ordinance amending the consolidated, consolidated, consolidated fee schedule to modify certain fees related to recreational facilities. Second. Motion is from Councilmember Dugan, second from Councilmember Young. Any discussion to this motion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. Motion carries unanimously. We are now on section L, unfinished business, and L1. I will look for a motion. Uh, my Mr. Chair, I move that the Council approve the resolution adopting the tentative budget for Salt Lake City, Utah, including the tentative budget for the Library Fund for fiscal year 2024-2025. Second. second. Motion from Councilmember Pui and second from Councilmember Lopez Chavez. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. 
Motion carries unanimously, and I will look for a motion on the agenda. Move to, oh, move to approve the consent agenda. Move Second. to approve. Yeah. Motion from Council <laughs> Member Peach or a second from Council Member Dugan. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. Motion carries unanimously, and our meeting is adjourned.